Welcome back to this edition of Frontiers. And the frontier we're looking at this time is cold fusion. I'm John Parrott, and my guest is Dr. Eugene Maloff, author of the book Fire from Ice, based on the debate surrounding the scientific theory of cold fusion. Let's rejoin our conversation. Is there, or rather, are there any pollutants that would come from cold fusion? Cold fusion, when it's finally understood, will probably have some types of pollutants, but they'll be very minimal. Its, its dominant effect in cold fusion is the release of energy in the form of heat. This is the extraordinary thing. There is tritium in some cases, but it's certainly not consistent in conventional hot fusion terms with the amount of energy that's being released. There's something marvelous about it, which allows nuclear energy release, and if it is a nuclear process, there have to be products that we will find in, in the system. But they appear not to be, even at, the, at these rather impressive levels that have already been developed of power, uh, it appears not to be a big problem. It sounds from what you've been saying that the international community is taking this whole question of cold fusion much more seriously than, than, than American uh, scientists are in the sense of its potential, in the sense of the fact that it could be there. Am I true? Is that right? I think in Japan there's a much more o open view of cold fusion. Uh, they're, they're, it's just it's not necessarily accepted, although there have been some recent dramatic uh, changes in that direction. But I think basically it's much more easygoing in places like Japan and Italy and the Soviet Union, for that matter. Uh, India did a lot of work. There are many countries that have done work on this. It is only, it seems, within the United States and England also, where there has been literally a witch hunt against cold fusion. Aren't we in a way morally bound, though, to look closely at the possibilities of this for the very sake of survival? I believe that's the case. I believe that uh, to throw out a potentially fantastic new energy source, uh, one that even the skeptics themselves maintain they can't explain, they say, oh, it might be a good battery, or this, that, or the other thing. Explain it in conventional terms for me. If you can't explain it in conventional terms, there may be something even more remarkable there. It may be a new power source. They just wish it away. They say, we don't believe it, we're not going to look at it, and goodbye. Okay? Anti-scientific, in my opinion. Gene, in a way, you've taken us to the boundaries in one area with cold fusion. The, the possibilities, the potential is just almost perhaps beyond most of our imaginations. But what other boundaries are interesting you these days? You're not just focusing on cold fusion issues. Well, I'm interested in all aspects of science, and the, the thing that interests me the most, I believe, apart from cold fusion, is uh, the possibility that uh, civilizations other than our own may populate the universe, and the galaxies in the universe, the uh, other star systems, planets around other stars. I'm convinced they're there. I'm, I've been uh, following the interesting developments over the years in the radio search for extraterrestrial civilizations, uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, as well as private foundations and individuals have been uh, pursuing this hoping to find a radio signal that represents intelligence out there. That's fascinating to me. What do you define as intelligence, then? Well, I believe that the universe comes to life. I wrote a book called The Quickening Universe, which says that, and this is not a new thought, but I synthesized it and said that the laws of nature, the laws of physics, embody molecular evolution, which then evolves into organisms inevitably, given a good planet. Not every planet can harbor life. But in the right conditions, I believe it's inevitable. And I also believe that this thing we call intelligence, um, which uh, we embody, we believe, in a animals also, but we are a, a more developed form of it, uh, this also exists elsewhere and contemplates itself. That is, the universe contemplating itself. My thanks to Gene Maloff. Well, he certainly took us to the outer reaches of space and to the ocean behind me in that quarter kilometer cube of ocean water and its potential power. Utopian dream or reality? I guess time will tell. Well, if you agree or disagree or would like us to explore a certain frontier, we'd love to hear from you. Here's the address. Frontiers, the Monitor Channel, 1 Norway Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02115. Please write. Until next time, I'm John Parrott. Thank you for joining us on Frontiers. Meantime, take care. Goodbye now.